All right, welcome to a very special edition of Beginner Breakdown. I'm Jonathan Schranz, filling in for Mike Kummer. It's the, uh, the last Beginner Breakdown of the year. Um, and as Mike has taught us, not only is Mike a superb and excellent chess coach, he's also a superb and excellent life coach, which the one thing he's taught us, if he's only taught us one thing, and he's taught us so many things, is, and there's a spoiler alert, alert coming, so if you want to go watch his Meaning of Life Revealed video before you, you understand what life is about, you may want to do that now. He's taught us that life is all about getting glory. So here I am at the end of the year, getting the very last beginner breakdown credit, and he's at home, still out of shape, because he stopped working out with me. But by the time you see this video, that might be reversed. Maybe he's working out with me again. So, all right, <clears throat> I'm filling in for Mike today. We'll get a little serious. Um, my, I played a game, uh, my last game that I played online uh, was against a FIDE master. Normally we, we pick on little kids, um, like right up front here. We got a couple kids we could pick on. But I decided to go after a FIDE master. Um, he didn't play the best game, but once you see the opening, you'll, you'll understand why I'm showing this on Beginner Breakdown. So it was an e4, e5 opening, um, and after some normal moves, I decided to go in for the Italian game, a Mike Comer specialty. It was, to be fair to myself, I didn't see the lecture that I had given yesterday and realized how awesome the scotch is. So I couldn't play that. I hadn't studied it yet. <clears throat> so okay. And all right, I think this is a really good opening for beginners to play. Um, and the two knights defense is a, a really good way for black to meet this. <clears throat> now, if you're too high rated to be watching a beginner breakdown, You'll probably play the move d3 here, because that's what all the top players do, and it's probably the best move. But it wouldn't be beginner breakdown if I didn't play knight to g5. Um, OK, so maybe people haven't seen this. I know we got some, some newcomers here. Um, so the threat is to take on f7. And how does black parry this threat? What's the, what can we do to block this diagonal? Aspen? D5. D5, excellent. I already this. And she already knows it. OK, <clears throat> excellent. Um, so there's nothing better than taking. So that's what happened. And a very strange thing happened the day I played this game. Um, I got to this position, and there's two moves that I know really well here. Um, one is, is taking on D5, which is not very good. And the other is the main line, knight to A5. So I was feeling pretty well prepared to face either one of those. But I got surprised. I had this position twice um, against some pretty high rated opponents. And I got two different moves that I'd never seen. So really, there's about four variations that you want to know. So we're going to go over some of the lesser variations that don't get to make an appearance on beginner breakdown very often. One of those moves, the first game I played, was the move b5, a crazy looking move. Um, this is the Olvistad variation. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. And then there's what my opponent played, which is the Fritz variation, knight to d4. Um, all right, if we didn't explain the fried liver, this wouldn't be beginner breakdown. So we'll go over uh, one game really quick. It's not the focus of our lecture, but OK. So the fried liver, as we've seen many times in this class. Um, and all right, so the point is we've you know, forced the king to move to the center of the board, um, and at some point, uh, after we attack the knight again, <clears throat> black is going to have to figure out how he's going to defend his knight. <clears throat> uh, one way is to retreat a knight, um, but that does block in the bishop. And OK, a move like d4 is coming, and that's going to be a really strong move. <clears throat> and the other way uh, is in a game. And I wanted to show this game. It was an instructive game. Shirov was playing with the white pieces in the 2014 Chess Olympiad. And I think his move here was excellent. In this position, uh, black is threatening to fork you on c2. He's going to attack the, the king and the rook. <clears throat> um, but Shirov here, he allowed it and even begged black to play it. He played the move a3, um, which if you put this on your engine, it's going to say this is a slight inaccuracy. But then if you go through this game, they're playing all the forced moves, and then suddenly it says white is winning. So I think Shirov probably did his homework, and this line may well just be refuted. So. In that game, uh, OK, so he got to take, and he gets to, to win the rook. But now this guy is undefended, so we're going to get a piece back. 
Uh, Shirak took with his knight. Now he's threatening some discovered checks. So the king gets out of the way. And now another strong move, d4. So it would be really ill-advised for black um, to take this and allow the bishop to come to this diagonal. The bishop would simply be way too strong. So in this position, he instead got his bishop out. And so now white has the option of taking. <clears throat> But it might not be in his best interest. After all, his king is on the D file, and there is a black queen on the D file. So that's not the file he really wants to open up. The tension really favors white, since black is never really threatening to take on E4. So instead, he just builds on the pressure, rook to E1, getting all of his pieces into the game. Um, you'll notice this is, you know, some, black, when he goes and wins the material like this in the corner, that knight often is going to end up trapped. And the most important feature, is obviously this king on e6. So we'll go through. Um, OK, it's hard to find a move here for black. What he tried in the game was, was b5. And <clears throat> all right, there's, there's more to this lecture, so we'll, we'll go through a few moves, a nice tactic. And <clears throat> all right. So here he can win some more material. Um, you'll notice the queen and king are on the same diagonal. So what did white play here? If we can get some new hands. There's a lot of new people here. <clears throat> Do you see it? What is it? Uh, bishop G5. Excellent. Yeah, bishop to G5, um, skewering the king. Whoop. Skewering the king to the queen. <clears throat> uh, all right. So he won some material here. Now, the only thing that could possibly happen that would be bad is you know, letting him take this deep on. But white has a good way of rounding up the e5 pawn. He takes with check, and then he gets to pick up the pawn. And again, we're going quickly through this game because there's, there's a lot more we're, we're really going to focus on. But uh, OK, so now after misplacing the black king, he gets to pick up the c pawn. And now this knight is trapped. So he's not going to escape at all. Uh, all right, a5 doesn't really do much except for make the knight try to find a better square. But it's hard for black to do anything. He's just kind of paralyzed here. Uh, and so now, after this trade, white has a discovered check. So the king has to move. And OK, a very tricky move. Now, it might appear that this pawn is attacked twice, because it's attacked twice. But there is a trick. Um, white has a, a little tactic. So if we imagine the bishop takes, what would white play here? We might go to the back of the room for this. Queen d3, excellent. Danny Machuca, everybody. <laughs> um, all right, right. so the check on the king, it's a double attack. And then wherever the king moved, we'd be able to win some material here. And similarly, if the rook takes, we would trade first. And then this check. <clears throat> OK. So in this position, uh, he didn't take. He played g6. And now another little cute tactical move. He just took the pawn on g6. And black resigned. So the point is now if you take, what is white playing? Why did he give up his rook? Do you know the answer? Yeah. All right. All right. Good job, Jonathan. Queen e6. Double attack here. So he would pick up the, the rook. And black had had enough. If you, you know, count the material. Even in such a position, though there's nowhere I'd really want to put my king. <clears throat> um, OK, it's uh, a knight, a bishop, and a rook. But the quality of this, this central queen and the strength of this pawn means game over for black. <clears throat> so that was just an excellent demonstration of uh, how to dismantle the black king when you, they played the fried liver. <clears throat> and all right, this game was played in an Olympiad. So it's tough when you have to play Shirov in a team event. But it doesn't help your team if you're playing the fried liver. So not the best choice. But OK, there are other moves here. Um, the main line, which we'll show very briefly, is knight to a5. So <clears throat> there's a, what white will typically do is first he's going to give this check. And after black blocks, white will be up a pawn. <clears throat> and now there's lots of bishop retreats that are, are moves. Bishop e2 is the most common. Bishop f1 is a common move. Bishop d3 is a move that I like to play. 
Um, and especially if you play Bill Thompson, you should play bishop to d3 because he always plays the same way. <clears throat> Normally in these, these lines when the bishop is somewhere else, black kicks this knight away. And then the bishop gets, uh, but in this line, the knight gets to go to e4. <clears throat> and whenever I play Bill, he goes for, like this, and I'm up a pawn, and my bishop's awesome. So you play Bill a lot, so this is the secret. And I've told him about this, and he still does this. So now Ben Simon knows how to beat Bill Thompson. You learned something. <clears throat> All right. But uh, OK, after this, we'll look at the most common move, um, just give you sort of an idea of what happens when they play the main, main line. Now h6 makes sense, kicking the knight back. And you're going to gain uh, more time on the knight, kicking him away again. <clears throat> so the knight has to make a you know, risky adventure into e5. But white's always going to have the saving move d4 to help save his knight. <clears throat> and the example of the initiative that black might get for his pawn um, is in the following continuation. <clears throat> so if you know the en passant rule, you'll understand what just happened. <clears throat> and OK. So we'll just go up uh, typical developing. These moves preventing white from castling, because if you castle, the h pawn would be unprotected. <clears throat> and all right, we'll just go a few moves. So you can get an idea. Um, this is sort of the, the main line, h3, so that you can castle. And you get to such a position. And white and black has a certain compensation here for the pawn, as indicated by these very scary arrows. So we'll draw lots of scary arrows so that you get scared. <clears throat> and this is sort of a normal position that's been reached several times, um, things you know, similar to this. And all right, it's, it's all right for both sides. It's a, a decent way to play. But now we're going to look at the unusual stuff. <clears throat> so in this position, there's two unusual moves, but I faced them both on the same day. One of those, the first one that I faced, was bishop to b5. <clears throat> and I didn't play the best move here. Um, the main move might surprise you. What would you guys play here as white? That's the main move. Yeah, bishop f1 is, uh, is the main move. <clears throat> I played bishop takes pawn, and I just said, all right, what is, I didn't know what the trick was, so I said, all right, show it to me. <clears throat> um, but now this allows a double attack here for black. <clears throat> and I played the trickiest move. Um, most, the main line is just to take this, so we'll look at that in a second. But that's kind of scary for white. I played the trickiest move, which is bishop to e2, and he fell for the trick immediately because he took this g-pawn. And then what winning move did I play? So it looks, it's looking good for black until you see my next move. Do you see it? Bishop f3. Bishop f3. <clears throat> right, and then he took this, and I took here with check, and I took another piece, and then I won. So, <clears throat> okay, so he didn't have to take on g2. The main line in this position is taking, though it can be kind of scary for white. <clears throat> um, so black gets to make this threat. This knight isn't really very useful on g5, so if you retreat it, um, you know, you get some position like this. Black's going to put a rook on the d file and prepare to break through with e4. So in this one game between two Greek players with names impossible for me to pronounce, so I won't even try, <clears throat> um, we'll see what happened. In this game, black just got a huge initiative based off the fact that uh, e4 is such a powerful move. <clears throat> um, OK, we'll just have. If you castle on the, on the side for the black? Sure, if you castle right here. <clears throat> yeah, and this is, uh, yeah, the computer wanted to see this as well. So this is a very good continuation. Um, the, yeah, the king is, is decent here. There's no attack by white. And yeah, a move like e4 is coming. <clears throat> um, so if we made a bad move, well, not, not terrible, but just to illustrate the point, um, white wouldn't be able to open up this, this file, um, even if after some trades, because there's this, you know, these threats on the d file. So <clears throat> yeah, so castle and queen side is a, is a very good move in this, this position. <clears throat> um, in, a, in this one game, though, he went to the other side, and black got the move e4 in. Um, so, and he even sacrificed a little bit of material here when he took the knight. And after this exchange, uh, he's in some pretty bad shape. He decided to move his knight, which is the losing move. So, all right, now we're noticing 
there's going to be some tactics here because the queen wants to take on g2, but his own knight is in the way. Also, if you just move the knight somewhere, um, OK, then your queen is falling. <clears throat> so black has to find a really nice move, but there is a winning continuation here. So we'll see if the audience can find it. <clears throat> it's tricky. There's a lot going on. <clears throat> this is a potential threat. <clears throat> uh, you know, White has a threat. There's a rook here that wants to take something. <clears throat> All right, excellent. You want to take this guy? Yeah. Excellent. And that was played. And when White took back, how did you want to follow up? You take the, the, the knight. Right, yeah. Rook takes Knight. And White's in some, some bad shape here. <clears throat> um, in the game, he tried putting his king back. But now, Black can move this knight anywhere and threaten checkmate. <clears throat> so he found a good square. He attacked a queen. So White can you know, give up his queen and avoid checkmate which is what the computer wants to do. Uh, but he tried to play queen f3, which loses instantly. <clears throat> um, so who can see there's a checkmate now? Do you see it? Uh, queen takes queen, pocket queen, checks, wait, oh, Yeah, not quite, not quite. <clears throat> All right, that was a good try, though, right? <clears throat> right, a very good try. Do you have it? Yeah, knight e2. Um, so you're forcing the king to the h file. Now notice how nice your knight is. The king doesn't get to escape. Now all you got to do is put a piece on the h file. <clears throat> so he brought his rook over, and white resigned. Um, <clears throat> if you block, now your queen is pinned. So this would be checkmate. <clears throat> all right. So an excellent example of the, the powerful initiative black can get for the pawn. Um, <clears throat> OK. And that's why. In this variation, after b5, most people will play bishop to f1. <clears throat> um, the point being that now after the, the knight moves, we're going to win this pawn, but we're going to win it a little bit later. <clears throat> and since somebody had played this against me, uh, I studied this particular pawn structure that you're going to get after this very tricky move, where now both knights are hanging. I'm attacking his knight. He's attacking my knight. <clears throat> so you can play a move like knight to e4. That's a, a decent alternative. But the move I, I studied after this game that was interesting to me was taking the knight, getting this very unusual pawn structure. But if you play this opening, it's actually quite common. So there's a lot of games with this. And since I had just studied this weird pawn structure, you'll see it again when I played the FM. <clears throat> so he took, uh, OK, so black will normally take. And now you get this check in. And there's no really good way to block. So they're going to put their king on d8, which is advantageous for white. Uh, black is threatening the g pawn. But a move like queen f3 is very nice. And after some moves like this, you get a very pleasant position with the white pieces. Uh, to show you one you know, kind of complicated follow-up, we can imagine this is something that's happened several times. They'll move knight to e3. So, OK, so there are some, some threats here. This rook is trying to take your bishop. It's, a, it's very complicated. So the queen has to go somewhere where it's protecting the g-pawn. Uh, obviously, this checkmate was, is to be avoided. <clears throat> so, and there's this a complicated position that occurs. And this has been played more than once. Um, so OK, and white should be slightly better here. You know, he's going to play a move like, like d4, and he's going to get this you know, he's going to protect his bishop. <clears throat> and white's a little bit better, but it's still complicated, and black's up to a lot of mischief. So this is uh, something that, that's interesting to play. So if you look at these lines, you're going to see this kind of sort of stuff. <clears throat> OK. So instead, let's get back to the, the real game that we're here to see. Um, <clears throat> OK. Knight to d4, the Fritz variation. <clears throat> and now we'll go a little bit slower, and we'll, we'll focus on this game. Now, I immediately played castles, and then I immediately regretted it. I should definitely play the move c3 in this position to immediately question this knight. And here, uh, he can play the move b5 and transpose to the other variation. I could again play you know, bishop to f1. And we could get this same position, where now after he's, he's taking, I'm taking here. And we get this same position as before. So that was possible. 
<clears throat> um, but OK, but because I castled, I lost the ability to go for that line. <clears throat> so he took my pawn on d5, um, revealing an attack on my knight. But obviously, if his queen moves, then his knight on d5 will be unprotected. <clears throat> Um, so having studied that pawn structure from before, I played the move c3, intending if he took my knight, as he did, that I would take back. <clears throat> and um, OK, I also considered you know, bishop takes d5, not compromising my pawn structure. And perhaps it's a better move. But having just seen the pawn structure uh, that I was, I was studying, I said, OK, I'm going to go in for this. And <clears throat> all right. And so the position should be equal-ish. And now black is going to get a scary looking attack, but it's not really that scary. But here he made a big threat. So, okay, the threat of checkmate is strong. So how did I, I stop from getting checkmated? Or did I just get checkmated? And <laughs> good. <laughs> Right. right, good lecture. I just got I just got checkmated. Yeah. Do you have an idea? Uh, queen F3. Excellent. Yeah, I played. Three. Right, you mentioned two moves: queen f3 or g3. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to weaken my kingside structure because I realize you know there's a there's a bishop and a knight that might want to come occupy some of these squares. This bishop also would be good if it made its way to f3. So I decided I didn't want to weaken uh, my pawn structure. So after we go back a little bit, <clears throat> I played queen to f3. And then he played the move bishop to d6, which at the time I thought was the losing move. I thought I was winning already, because after I take here, there's going to be some stuff on the e-file. But uh, and we'll look at that, because that's, that's what happened in the game. But here, after I take, um, if you're really cunning, there's a way for black to equalize here. He should. You know, start to think that he's going to be a lot worse because bad stuff's going to happen on the e file. But this one is actually a really tough one. So we're looking to the people in the back here to try to find this answer. What should black play in this situation? Have you got it in the front? Bishop uh, h3. Bishop h3? <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, yeah, so that's. Yeah, so it's an interesting move that I didn't even consider. Um, you know, because I, I assume I can take your bishop, or I assume I can play d4. Let me take your bishop. <clears throat> what were you going to play here? Uh, wait. Wait, take the pawn. Yeah, how do you want to take it? Because uh, well, everything can take it, so. OK. And so my idea was I'm going to try to trade queens and not get checkmated. I'm going to try. <clears throat> um, yeah, so even if, if you play this check, I can just move my king. Um, <clears throat> OK. I mean, you can trade stuff and take my rook. But <clears throat> OK, looks, looks pretty good for me. So that's actually not the answer. Though that was an interesting one. That was a good, a good try. <clears throat> um, so the main move that he could have played <clears throat> is knight to h3. So the knight is protected by the bishop, so my queen can't just grab it. So I'd have to move my king unless I want to lose my queen. <clears throat> so, but when my king moves, now black can take this pawn with a big threat. <clears throat> and white would have nothing better than to trade off the queens. And we'd go into this equalist position. Now the knight can retreat. <clears throat> and I didn't get checkmated, but now due to the liquidation, uh, black should be able to get back into this game pretty easily. The knight will be able to escape. And we'll just get our pieces out. And so this was Black's best try, and he's certainly not losing if he finds that continuation. <clears throat> but in the game, he took the pawn. So what did I play here? <clears throat> yeah. Rookie so if I play rookie one immediately, he might be able to get out of some of the trouble by castling. Now the, the queen is protecting the bishop. <clears throat> Though this is still pretty good for me. <clears throat> but there's something even stronger. Can you check with the bishop? Check with the bishop here? No. Here? Yeah. Um, what does this check get you? You're gonna, so if I play here, you're taking it? That's what you're thinking? Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so that's actually an interesting move. Yeah, the point is uh, he's trying to win a lot of stuff here. <clears throat> I wonder if I can be really brave. <clears throat> I don't know, but I'm going to try to be really brave. So if you, like, take this, I'm going to try to checkmate you. I don't know. I'm going to try. <clears throat> Mm. <clears throat> right, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so here it might be different, though, with the inclusion of this bishop, um, because now, you know, this check would win the queen. So it is a little bit different. <clears throat> um, and okay, and I don't have to play c6. I could, you know, like move my king and be a little bit worse that way. <clears throat> or be a little gutsy and get my king into the center of the game. But <clears throat> okay, but yeah, this is actually an interesting move. So, and I didn't consider that during the game. So that's, a, that's an excellent try. And it, it probably is pretty good for white because black's position is really bad now. But I played the move d4, exploiting the fact that uh, the bishop is stuck guarding the knight now that I've unleashed another attacker. So if you, you, know, you take my pawn, then I take your, your knight. So I thought he was going to play the best move, which is bishop to d6. But he surprised me. He didn't play that move. And then I'd be better because I would get this check in, misplace his king, and I'd play a move like knight to c3, threatening to you know, eliminate this bishop, which is one of the key defenders of f4. So, OK. So then I would just be better. And that's what I assumed was, was going to happen. But he surprised me. He played bishop to g4, um, which is a very bad move. But this was a three-minute game. And so it's scary when there's this many pieces by your king. Uh, so I got to be pr pretty careful here. Whenever the bishop moves, you'll notice that the b pawn is no longer defended. So I have a nice, safe move. I can safely take the b pawn. That's what I did. I'm attacking the rook. And my queen is still useful on this diagonal, because in some lines, when I need to protect the g pawn, she is still there for me. <clears throat> but you know, it's, it's scary. That's a lot of pieces by my king. And now he did something strange again. Uh, he could just castle, but then he loses his bishop. <clears throat> so he decided <clears throat> to offer me a rook, or maybe two rooks. <clears throat> so the real theme of today is going to be some uh, double rook sacrifices, which are <clears throat> you know, incredibly rewarding when it works. Here, I have the opportunity to take his rook with check. So I did it. And he played an inaccuracy. Uh, he put his king on e7, which is a mistake, because some lines I'll be able to give this check. Actually, if he goes to d7, and I decide to accept this sacrifice, I'm losing. Because now black has a winning attack. What can black play here? <clears throat> And this is the point of a double rook sacrifice. Um, it's usually a queen that's you know, taken both of the rooks. And what's interesting about it is the time that you gained can be used to checkmate your opponent. All right, so it's in this position. Uh, you were asking about knight to h3. And OK, so one thing I can do is I can move my king. But I'm wondering if I can just take your knight. The point is, if you take here. Thinking you're checkmating me, you're going to be, be kind of sad. <clears throat> so OK, so that's, that's interesting. Now if I can do this without messing it up again. <clears throat> OK. <clears throat> so we didn't find the winning move here. <clears throat> uh, does anyone have it? Maybe somebody in the back? <clears throat> have you got it? <clears throat> Knight e2. Check. OK, so if I take it, I'm not getting checkmated. So I'm, I'm happy to trade some pieces. And OK, you can trade. But, uh, all right, but I think Paul sees it. What's it? Bishop f3. Bishop f3. Uh, so the immediate threat is checkmate. Notice that I can't play g3 because knight h3. Excellent. So yeah, the knight attacks it. The bishop covers the light squares. The knight isn't touching. And uh, we got a checkmate. 
Uh, there is a way to avoid getting mated immediately, though. You can give away your queen. Um, <clears throat> the point being, not that you're escaping one more move, but you actually do create an escape square for your king. So after this king goes somewhere, uh, and you have to play this move, well, <clears throat> you're still alive. It's, it's a pleasure to be black here, but uh, you didn't get checkmated immediately. <clears throat> okay. But in the game, he played king to e7. Now, if I wanted to, I could take this. But it was a three-minute game, and so I didn't have a whole lot of time to calculate. <clears throat> but, uh, <clears throat> okay. If I take this, now it's a little bit different. If he plays bishop f3 again, now I have rook to e1 with check, and there's not a good way to block. And the obvious king running away move leads to a checkmate. So for example, if you try to check me and block, still threatening mate, what move will white play? Person just walking in the room. <clears throat> right. <laughs> All right, but white's in check. Double check. All right, so we got double check suggested. <clears throat> All right, but white can just take this. Because you're in check, and okay, your queen is hanging, so. <clears throat> okay. Right, it was a tough one. <clears throat> okay. But in the game, since it was a, a quick game, <clears throat> I decided to play practically. <clears throat> I just moved my, my queen back to e4, <clears throat> uh, checking the king. <clears throat> and all right, <clears throat> so he still has some dreams of checkmating me. <clears throat> and I didn't really necessarily play the best move, but I played the most practical. I just traded pieces, because now there's less pieces surrounding my king. And after he took back, knight c3 forced resignation. So I'm threatening just to play knight to c5 and win this bishop. And I have a lot more pieces, and I didn't get checkmated. And his king is on f6. So he had had enough. <clears throat> uh, so that was you know, an example of somebody that you know, it's probably much higher rated than you, but even they play you know, some pretty terrible games sometimes. <clears throat> uh, this was me versus some FM on the internet. So, <clears throat> all right. All right, so this, uh, that game that we just showed really inspired me for the rest of this lecture. We're going to look at uh, two more games here real quick with some double rook sacrifices that actually worked. So I had the potential to take two of my opponent's rooks, but I didn't go for it. But here we're going to see a game between Topalov and Boreyev where it worked, and it was actually brilliant. <clears throat> and when I first started playing chess, I had a coach. He was just some dad um, at my school, so he didn't really know much about chess. But he showed me a double rook sacrifice, and I thought it was brilliant. Um, and I looked it up before this lecture, and every move was a blunder. So I couldn't show that game. I had to find some games where it actually worked. All right, <clears throat> and it works here, the French defense. Um, and we enter. A line that you might not suspect is going to end in 19 moves. The burn variation, like its cousin, the, uh, the Rubenstein, is known to be really solid. And it's probably not the way I'd recommend a beginner to play. But for your grandmasters, when a draw is good with black, you know, it's a perfectly fine opening. And so we got this position. Uh, and now one time on, on chess.com, after the normal move, which was not played, I had an opponent who got banned for cheating, they played the move bishop to e7 here. And so then I decided, since that's what the computer, that guy liked was just using a computer, I played that in a tournament game. And it wasn't very good, because the bishop is better here on f6. So I learned my lesson. <clears throat> but in this game, uh, instead of the normal continuation, <clears throat> white played the move c3, and he had an idea that didn't really work. <clears throat> um, OK, so now black is ready. If white ever wants to trade, he can take back with a knight. <clears throat> and now when black gets the move e5 in, uh, he's sort of equalized. Now this bishop is going to have a, a good time getting out. <clears throat> and OK, what is white going to do <clears throat> after such a move? Now it's not often when you see the strongest in the world playing that they don't develop their pieces in castle. So white's plan was to push here on the king side. <clears throat> and in such a position, Black gets castled, and white is going to have a hard time castling. Why don't these people play this against me? When I play grandmasters, they develop all their pieces in castle. But when they play each other, they make a lot of mistakes, and they don't do anything. So very interesting. <clears throat> OK. Now, uh, white decides to block the d file. Now he might castle. 
But black stopped him with a very interesting move. Queen to d5. The queen is on the same diagonal as a rook. And if you castle, your a pawn is hanging. So a, a clever way of disrupting white from castling. Now, if you trade here, which was not played, you may think, OK, I have a way to protect my rook and attack your queen. But now what would black play? Maybe somebody in the front can find it. Is it double check again? <clears throat> double check? What's the last answer? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Uh, rook e8. Awesome. Yeah, rook e8, and you're going to lose this piece here. So excellent move. <clears throat> um, it'll never end with that. <clears throat> OK. So a nice disruptive move. And so white still has the intention of castling. So a3 was played. And now uh, this is black's last chance to do something really cool before white gets castled. Um, so and this is what typically happens. So if you're looking for a sacrifice, now's the time. So maybe somebody who's higher rated in the audience can find what black played here. Knight takes f4 was played. The point being. If you take the knight, we'll get this check in. And after a move like f4, you're still having problems on this diagonal. You can, you can try for one more trick, and maybe I won't see that you can pin my queen. But if black just moves over, well, you're going to run into some trouble. Your king doesn't belong on f1, and you have some problems here. <clears throat> so instead, that wasn't played. He has another possibility, uh, white does of taking this bishop, which was played, and now taking on h7, which was played. So the king has to move. And now white made a mistake, but it was hard to imagine that it's a mistake. He put his queen on e4. And if white trades queens, then he's going to be happy. He's not going to get mated. But if you remember the theme of this lecture, you might find the next move. So here is the really, truly brilliant move. Um, and the computer doesn't see it until you tell it. It says black is you know, probably winning. And then you tell it this move, and it's like, yeah, black's really winning. So what, what amazing and stunning move did black play in a double rook sacrifice lecture? Rookie eight. Rookie eight. <clears throat> All right. This guy here, he's OK. <clears throat> OK, so that was played, attacking the queen. So the queen has to take it. He took it, yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you blundered your queen. <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, he offered another rook. So what's going on? <clears throat> you know, Why did black give away all of his rooks? He better have checkmate. And it's actually mate in 10 here. <clears throat> so sometimes I have students that they'll play like mate in 11 or 12 here. They won't play accurately. And that drives me crazy when they have time. When you have time to sit and calculate, and this was a long game, so he probably calculated it, and he played it correctly. And he went for checkmate. Uh, you should do that and try to practice your calculation. You know, This is about to be a masterpiece. You've sacrificed both of your rooks, and now you're going to checkmate white. So at the end, it better be a really pretty picture. It should be nice enough that they could display it at the World Chess Hall of Fame. This is your canvas, and this is your art. So you need to checkmate them as fast as possible. And black found a way to do that. Uh, OK, so it's obvious the king is. Is getting a little exercise here. So after a few more moves, uh, all right. White figured it out. Yeah, it's over. So he, uh, he resigned in this position. So this was a case where giving up both rooks actually was not only correct, it was very exciting. And uh, he polished off the game with excellent technique. So <clears throat> all right. So one more game that we got for you with the double rook sacrifice. This is the game between Alexander Alekhine and Gregory Levenfish. So a classic game. Uh, this also had a really exciting uh, finish. So we'll, get, we'll just get serious here. We'll put the opening on the board. And f4 was played the most aggressive way for white to fight against this. He's going to play e5 as soon as possible. And here it really worked. So after a6, uh, you, you might just casually play a4 to stop b5. But here the move e5 is really strong. And it was played. OK. So in this position, he gets the move e6 in, 
which is good in chess and bug house. So either way, white, white's doing pretty good if we, we don't mention the F2 square. <clears throat> OK. And now a strange decision. Um, I feel like the next move for white is fairly obvious, and the computer agrees. But I'm not a world champion, and this guy is. So what do I know? Uh, H3 just seems like a natural move to me. And after the capture, you know, taking and, and playing G4, seems like a very strong continuation. But instead, the unusual bishop to F4, not as good, but it, it works out well in the game. And after the trade, again, I would definitely take with a queen. He took with a pawn, forcing the knight back. <clears throat> and all right, <clears throat> so he could take here. That's certainly a possibility. And the other interesting option is to make sure you keep a pawn on e6, which is what white decided to do. So even if you, you take here, we're going to be able to keep this pawn on e6 for a while. It's very frustrating for the black king with the pawn there, because even if you play a move like b5, now white is going to be able to sacrifice, because you're going to have some problems here. You're going to end up giving up a piece, and you lost a lot of pawns. So OK. <clears throat> So that's an annoying, an annoying pawn, just like we're using an annoying software to make this film. <clears throat> and uh, OK, let's see, let's see. <clears throat> so white took, and now black could trade queens if he wants. But this rook is going to be really good on the d file. <clears throat> and you know it's hard to be the black king here. <clears throat> so instead, he decided to play queen to b6. <clears throat> see if I can do this without messing up the computer. Threatening to break one of my rules. Never play queen takes b2. Especially not here when you're underdeveloped. Um, this is exactly the kind of situation where it might backfire. And we're going to see that. So instead of guarding the b2 pawn, he lets black take it. And black obliged. And now uh, we get to the stunning part of the lecture. White played a fantastic move here. Black <laughs> might be feeling pretty happy. He's attacking lots of your pieces. Um, and the knight he could take with check. So he could take rooks and take knights. So white has to play uh, a really nice move here. <clears throat> right, so we can't even like, you know, just connect our rooks because the, the knight is falling. <clears throat> Queen d2. <clears throat> yeah, this is interesting. So yeah, so you're trying to get a, a sacrifice this way. <clears throat> <clears throat> Where are you going? Bishop to c7. And you're going to try to checkmate me? That's the plan, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is also interesting. So somehow I'll try not to get checkmated. I think that's possible. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to try. You can try to checkmate me. I'll try not to get checkmated. <clears throat> um, he actually played a, you know, a slightly more outstanding move. <clears throat> Let's see if it will let me. <clears throat> Knight to b5. Um, <clears throat> OK, so yeah, he's, he's coming in here to c7. And black decided to help himself to a, a pair of rooks. So he's feeling pretty good about that. But now knight to c7 is uh, going to end the game here. So the king had to move after this check. He decided to block. And, but once we take, all right, the, the threat of knight to e6 is a game ender, so black gave it up here. Um, and the reason, it's unlikely that you'll actually get a double rook sacrifice. It doesn't come up that often. But the reason I like to, to bring it up is because it emphasizes the importance of time in chess. So sometimes they'll be taking some of your material, but if you have a strong attack or you're making some stronger threats, it's worth uh, taking the time to see if you can give up some of your stuff, let them take it, and then go checkmate them. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is the last beginner breakdown of the year. Um, we'll see you again next year. Thanks for coming.